r slash ask reddit police officers of reddit was there a time you wanted to let someone off the hook but couldn't and if so what happened my partner is a police officer in australia one day he pulled over a guy on a motorbike with a young child seven nice sitting between him and the handlebars with no helmet on the guy explained that in india where he'd just moved from that was a perfectly normal thing to do and my partner explained that in Australia it was a big no-no. The guy started getting hostile and disrespectful. Demanding that he be let go without a ticket and allowed to continue back home with the kid still on the bike. There were a lot of witnesses in that. Coupled with the guy's attitude and disregard for our laws. Prompted my partner to give him a ticket. Even though he initially just wanted to give him a warning as he was so new to our country. He also had to show for the kid back to his house. Hours later. My partner gets a job to go to a domestic violence incident. He recognizes that it's at the same address he dropped the kid off at. He tears their code too and is confronted by the same Indian guy who slashed his wrists and is bleeding out everywhere. The guy ends up not dying and had to spend a stint at psych ward. Turns out that when he got home, his wife had given him a massive tongue lashing saying he'd brought shame upon them and the sight of their son being dropped off by a police car with all the neighbors watching was utterly humiliating she said she was going to leave him and go back to injure etc etc and the guy tried to end it all as he was so overcome with self-remorse sad all round crazy how a small traffic ticket that wasn't even going to be written out at the start blew up into life-changing events for this family edit oh wow thanks for the gold mate I'm actually pretty chuffed as I've never received it before. Turns out that, when he got home, his wife had given him a massive tongue lashing, saying he'd brought shame upon them, and the sight of their son being dropped off by a police car with all the neighbors watching was utterly humiliating. She said she was going to leave him and go back to injure etc etc. And the guy tried to end it all as he was so overcome with self remorse. That's really interesting. I kind of had the impression. That marriage was a more serious commitment in India than in the US. Where people can indeed get divorced for relatively minor reasons. But apparently I was wrong. Generally speaking the sense of honor is stronger in Asian countries as well. Being respectable is super important. Guy was brought into the station by the German police in handcuffs. I was told to fill out the paperwork and advise the guy of his rights. He'd been busted for DUI. It was New Year's Eve and his neighborhood was having a party. He witnessed a female at the party being harassed and verbally abused by her husband. He tried to intervene, but the husband wouldn't back off. All the MPs were tied up. He tried calling a cab and no one was available. And everyone at the party was blitzed. So despite having had a few drinks, he took it upon himself to just drive the woman back to her home. On the other side of the neighborhood, in that very short distance, he got pulled over by the police and arrested. Essentially it was all just a good deed gone wrong. I had to read him his rights. But I also strongly hinted that he waive them and write a statement about the events. He ended up not getting into too much trouble military wise but still had a DUI on his record. I definitely felt bad for the guy. Edit, that's what I get for writing this then going to bed. At the time, I was US military police. Stationed in Grafenwoh, Germany, the soldier in question was living in an off-post housing area in which the Germans and the US both had jurisdiction. The police were conducting random stops as they have the right to do so. Since it was New Year's, since the soldier was compliant and not stumbling around acting like a fool, he was not charged on the German side of things. They simply brought him to the MP station and let us handle it. The DUI remained on his record, but he was not demoted, or barred or anything. Since he could prove that he'd exhausted all options before choosing to drive. Edit 2, he wanted to write a statement about it long before he waived his rights. Even after being advised he kept talking and told his story. Everything he was saying would have gone in my report anyways. So higher ups suggested it would probably just be in his best interest to write out the full story. Instead of getting it piecemeal in my paperwork, he was clear and articulate, with no outward signs of being intoxicated. They didn't walk to the woman's home because it was a housing development. Her house was on the other side. 
a good mile walk or so. It was deck 31 slash gen 1. Very late slash early. And freezing cold. The MPs were tied up. And a cab couldn't get to them for another 1-2 hours. The woman didn't drive, because she'd had far more to drink than the soldier had. I'm not sure what came of her husband. No good deed goes unpunished. This guy militaries. I got a ticket one day by turning left. I didn't see the no left turn sign because all the construction crap. The next day I accidentally cut of the sheriff. Not an officer in the department. But the bloody big guy himself. What's worse I didn't have my license and registration. I was a teen and a mess, so I handed him the ticket from the day before as proof of license and insurance. With a big unapologetic grin. Dude laughed so hard he had to hold on to my car. Didn't give me a ticket. I still wave hi to him when I see him. Chill dude. This is absolutely brilliant. Reminds me of when my older brother returned home from just getting his license and I asked, could he drive my friend Nick home? My mom was a little take off guard but said sure. Big brother blew a stop sign and got pulled over. When the officer asked how long he had his license, my brother looked at his wristwatch, then said just over an hour. The prick still wrote him the ticket. <laughs> Obligatory not a cop comment, I'm sorry. But I'm a criminal defense attorney. And I have to be vague about this. Because privilege. I had a client who charged with public intox. But this person was not drunk. Just off their meds and manic. I watched all the body cam footage. Five cops responded. And all but one wanted to book my client in on more serious charges. The one who didn't straight up said I'm not comfortable taking this person to jail. They need to go to the hospital. A supervisor was called in and overruled him. Telling all the cops there to book client in on three serious charges. One of which was a felony. The one cop recognized the situation for what it was. And literally took my client out of another cop's car. And booked them into jail, like he was told. But booked them in on public intox, because he knew it was the most minor offense he possibly could. And his report made it very clear, what he thought about the whole thing. Which made my end, and dealing with the DA way I I easier. I respect the hell out of him. God damn. You know that cop got it for it later too. That's personal sacrifice. It pisses me off that cops like that. The kind we need way more of. Probably get in trouble for insubordination instead of getting the respect they deserve. Yeah. Bravo for him slash her. <laughs> Plenty of times. But one in particular stands out. Me and my partner respond to a call of a domestic incident. Female caller states her husband throw her into the dresser and broke the bathroom door. So we get there, and as we are walking up the driveway this woman comes screaming out wearing only shorts. No shirt. No bra. Anyway we prepare for the worst. Figuring he was gonna follow her. Coming after her. Well we keep her outside for a minimum. When it's clear he wasn't coming out we go inside with her. By this time another car arrives with two more cops. So we go inside, and she sits on the couch, and covers herself with a blanket. We notice she has a nice bump on her head and elbow. She says her husband just got home, after completing two tours in Iraq, just got home, point two hours ago. She picked him up from the airport. He gets home. Takes and first thing he does, is take a shower. She says I have no idea what happened. He got out of the shower, grabbed me and threw me at the dresser, where I hit my head and elbow. Then I came downstairs, and called you guys. So we go upstairs and find the guy sitting on the bed. With his head in his hands crying. He look up at us, and says I'm so ducking sorry I didn't mean to do it. Without being prompted he tells his story. She picked me up from the airport and drove home. I come inside, and jump in the shower. When I get out I knock over the garbage can in the bathroom, and it falls over. He went to pick it up, and saw inside it was filled to the brim with used condoms. Like a box worth. And he was right. The garbage can was filled with condoms. That obviously weren't his. He said he came out and confronted her about to which she just shrugged her shoulders and said oh well. You weren't here. So he grabbed her and pushed her away from him in frustration. She hit the dresser and fell to the floor. Running out of the room. He gets frustrated and punches the bathroom door. Putting a hole in it. Well we had no choice. We had to arrest him. 
charged him with assault third. I'm not condoning what the guy did. But I understand it. He was off fighting in a war for two tours, while his girlfriend was living in his house. Driving his car. Having ex with other men in his bed. The real kicker. When someone gets arrested there's automatically an order of protection granted, in nice DV cases anyway. The order stated he had to vacate his home. He had no friends. No family and had to live in a shelter for a number of weeks. Bumped into the guy a year or so later. No job. No money alcohol and drug problems. All stemming from this one incident with his girlfriend. I have more, if you guys want to hear em. Have a few heartwarming stories as well. Let me know. Edit. Wow. Okay so I wrote this then went to work. It'll try and get back you guys. It'll also leave a funny story to try and balance this out. And thanks for the gold. Edit 2. Okay so people have been asking how they can help this man. Unfortunately this happened over 12 years ago in the Bronx. I hoped he did get his life together eventually. Edit 3. Okay, so it seems I need to explain a few things regarding discretion, and why I couldn't simply sweep this under the rug. In nice if two people live together, and certain offenses occur they fall under family offenses, and they are must arrest situations. This means I have zero discretion. Police have to arrest in these situations. Even if the complaint. Son. Daughter. Wife. Girlfriend. Baby mama, anything that falls under family member doesn't want the person arrested. In these cases a state would become the complainant. This was done about 25 years ago, to combat the problem of husbands beating the it out of their wives and the wives not wanting to press charges, and he kills her. The police used to have discretion in these cases. Hence the what does he have to kill her for you to arrest her? Edit 4, the funny story I promised you guys, so we get a call of a rescue. A little boy with a training potty, stuck on his head. So we go to the apartment and the mother tells us her son is sitting on the couch inside. We go inside and there is a 3 years old sitting on the couch watching cartoons. Drinking a Capri Sun with a training toilet bowel seat around his neck. It was stuck around his neck for over 3 hours at this point. His mother tells us that he put it over his head while fooling around and now she can't get it off. It won't come past his ears. It seems there is a inward dip in the toilet seat that allowed him to slide over his head in one direction, but can't get it up past his ears in the other direction. So there we are my partner and myself sitting on either side of this young man, while he sits there sipping on his juice pouch. We try and raise it a little bit, and it gets caught on his ears, and he screams, like we were stabbing him. At this point the fire department shows up. So now there are about 6 people in this house all looking at this little kid with tears streaming down his face. Poor guy. FD was hesitant to use any sort of tools because of how close the seat was to his head and neck and the fact that he wasn't exactly sitting still. So we ask the mom if she has any butter or crisco in the fridge that we can use to lubricate the seat and hopefully slide it up past his ears. Well she says she doesn't have any butter but she has something in her room that may help. She goes into her room and returns with a half full tube of anales. Yes this poor mother handed me her ex lubricant in full view of two cops and five or so firemen. And she didn't seem to be embarrassed in the least bit. Anyway we put on our gloves and began to slather anales all over the seat in this kid's face. Neck and ears, or three years old boy hoss face, is covered in his mom's anal lube jelly. Well after some turning and careful lifting, the seat popped right off with only minimal scratches to his ears. We all cheered. Returned the mother's tube of lube and left the house. What city? Im a vet who helps vets. And went through something similar. If I'm nearby I could help the guy. Edit. Hellister helps. Not sure how a ride in a helicopter would help this guy out. But it's worth a shot. Just after high school. I had just showed up to a party in the woods. No sooner had I grabbed a beer than about 5 cop cars come flying in. Lights blaring. Keep in mind. I haven't drank a thing. But my mind went run. As I start running down this path. A cop starts following me in his car. Fat guy. Wasn't very fast. I realize I'm not getting away and stop running. He comes up to me laughing. And says good choice. Big boy and cuffs me. And sits me down back up at the fire. I proceed to tell him everything. And he laughs and gives me a breathalyzer. Once he knows I wasn't bulleting him. 
He just says okay. Have a good night. Best cop ever. Edit. Forgot to mention. A few years later my wife and I were visiting my parents in the same town. And he pulled me over for speeding. He walks up to the window. Looks in and laughs. Slow down big boy. Then drives away. I played ball with a kid whose father was an officer growing up. He told me that if I'm at a house party and the cops show then run. He went on to say that cops knew half would hide half would run. They would rather spend their time looking for the hiders. This advice got me away from 3-4 house party breakups. This was my approach. Though sometimes they did still chase the runners, just for some fun I think. One of them ducking flying tackled me once. I would have been impressed if it wasn't me being flying tackled. Ducking like and subscribe.